This is an ABC News special report. The fall of Gaddafi. Good morning, and we are interrupting Good Morning America here on the East Coast, your regular program on the West Coast, because we have learned reports from Libya that Muammar Gaddafi, the leader of Libya for more than 40 years, has been killed by rebel forces. That report is coming from the leader of the military council for the rebels, the National Transition Council. He said that Gaddafi was captured and shot. Uh, insert his hometown. Rebels, of course, have been pursuing him there for several months. We want to get the latest now from Jeffrey Kaufman in London. Good morning, George. This, if true, is huge news. Libya TV now reporting that former dictator Muammar Gaddafi is dead. They say he was killed by rebel soldiers. According to Libyan TV, he pleaded, don't shoot, don't shoot, but they shot him. The announcement made in very dramatic fashion by an anchor in Libyan TV draped in the rebel flag, that green, black, and red flag that we've seen so much. We need to emphasize that there is still no independent confirmation of this. Uh, there is celebration, though, underway across Libya. Uh, an official with the interim rebel government told in Al Jazeera that Gaddafi uh, was shot in both legs. Uh, they now say that, that, that he died of those wounds, uh, and they are going to make an official statement uh, in a matter of hours. Uh, we still have to emphasize that there's no independent confirmation of this. Uh, we do know that this morning anti-Gaddafi rebels finally took control of Gaddafi's hometown of Sirte, the last loyalist holdout. And that means the rebels now control the entire country. George? Okay, Jeffrey, thanks very much. And of course, we have no confirmation yet either from the White House, the Pentagon, or State Department sources. Christian Amanpour is joining us now. Of course, this is huge news. Uh, he, he took over in a coup in 1969. Such a small country, but such a large role in that huge. world. He has been the global villain for so long now. You know, he's been accused of so many things, Pan Am 103, all these issues that had such close connection with the United States. Obviously, he sort of came in from the cold a few years ago. But the minute this Arab Spring started, and Libya was really the second or third after Tunisia and Egypt, mm -hmm. the world really decided enough is enough. This unprecedented uh, no-fly zone that the United States put up along with its NATO allies helping the National Transitional Council, the Libyan rebels, to get rid of this man now that so many of the people in Libya had risen up. And, and I was, talked to him, of course, right, about February. It was so clear when you talked to him several months ago that he didn't really know what was happening to him. You know, none of these people do. When they have been cocooned and people have told them yes all their lives, they really don't know what's going on. I've seen that over and over again in revolutions and, and, and upheavals such as this. But he really did not want to know what was going on. If you remember, the minute the uh, people started to rise up in the, in the streets, he called them cockroaches, we're going to come after you, I'm never going to surrender, I'm going to stay here till I die, that kind of thing. But it was different this time because they were in such denial before, because there have been uprisings before and they were always able to beat them back, but it's a different world now. It's a completely different world and the people power is not going to be uh, put back. Syria still is an issue, but here in Libya, thanks to the U.S. and its NATO allies, which mm. brought the U.S. in, they were able to crack Gaddafi's superior forces. Another major dictator has fallen. Christian Amanpour, thanks very much. We're going to go back to our regular program now and have much more on ABCnews.com. This has been an ABC